When creating a model, one of the most important steps you must complete is defining the physics. This involves adding the appropriate physics to your simulation, adding the loads and constraints on your system, applying them to the appropriate parts of the geometry in your model, and editing the settings for each. In Comsol Multiphysics, this process is made simple, straightforward, and is the same no matter what physics you are modeling. In this video, we will show you how to add the physics to your simulation, as well as review some tips and best practices to keep in mind as you define the physics. Here we have opened the Thermal Bracket Tutorial Model, which can be found under Windows in the Application Library. Let's start off with defining the physics for the thermal aspect of this problem. In order to define the physics, we first have to add the physics. We can not only do this through the ribbon, but we can also do this by right-clicking the respective node in the model tree. And this goes for any node that we add to our modeling sequence. The operation is always available in the respective node in the model tree. Additionally, if we were creating a new model and we're using the model wizard, after selecting our space dimension, we could also choose the physics here. In the model wizard, when we select a physics, we always get a description of what the physics interface is used for and the assumptions therein. Some of the physics we can choose from are single physics, such as the electric current interface whereas other physics, such as fluid structure interaction, are pre-built multi-physics couplings involving multiple physics interfaces. We'll just be focusing on using and setting up a single physics interface in this video. So when we add the physics, you'll notice that the physics are grouped by application area. What's available in this window will depend on what modules you hold a license for. When adding the physics to your model, think about first what application area the physics you're trying to simulate fall under, and then select the appropriate interface for that specific case of physics. For example, if we had a fluid flow problem, we'd expand that branch, then select the appropriate subgroup our type of flow falls under, and then select the interface that characterizes the flow. If we had a structural mechanics problem and we were creating a truss frame model, we would use the truss interface. Or if we had a helicopter swashplate assembly, we would choose and select the multibody dynamics interface. If we had an electrical problem, we'd expand the respective branch and again select the appropriate interface. In our model, we need to include heat transfer. Since we are modeling heat transfer in a solid object, the bracket, we select the heat transfer in solids interface and add it to our component. If you have any questions regarding the physics you want to add, you can always use the help button or the F1 key to access more information for any currently selected node or item within the software. Now that we've added the physics, let's talk about these nodes provided by default. So whenever we add a physics interface to our model, we always start with at least three nodes by default. Note that they contain the capitalized letter D on the top left corner of the nodes icon, indicating their default status. We will always have a conservation law being solved, an initial values node, and a default boundary condition node. The conservation law and boundary condition nodes will always vary depending on the physics you've added to your model, while the initial values node is always added no matter the physics you've included in your simulation. So for our first node, solid one, this contains the conservation law we'll be solving. If we expand the equation section, for any node, you can see one, the equation being solved, and two, the terms being contributed to the equation by the respective node. If you can't see the equation section in the settings window, just head to the model builder, click the show button, and select equation sections. 
So the software is transparent, as in there's no black box. You can always open this section and see the relevant mathematical equations and node contributions. Also in our conservation law node, we have other settings to define relevant material properties and other relations. You can see the default setting is to take these values from the material that we added to our model previously. However, you can override any of these choices and enter in a user-defined value manually. So in COMSA Multiphysics, adding the physics to your model actually helps you to identify what material properties need to be defined. Here this would be thermal conductivity, density, and heat capacity at constant pressure. In this demonstration, we added the material first ahead of time. As a result, when we added our physics, the software automatically pulled these values from the material we added. However, if we had been using a blank material and added it ahead of time, you'll need to know what properties you need beforehand and add them. Whereas if we added the physics first, then the blank material, the software again would have pulled these properties from the material, which we would have been required to enter a value for. The initial values node is used to define the initial state of our model and is only pertinent when you are working with either a time-dependent problem or a nonlinear problem. Since if the problem was transient, this node would contain the initial conditions for our simulation, or if the model was nonlinear, you could include an initial guess for the solution here. Our default boundary condition node is thermal insulation, which is applied to all the surfaces in our model by default. Any boundary conditions that we add following this, for example, to apply a temperature or heat flux on the bracket, will automatically override this node. This goes for the other default nodes as well. They automatically include all of the domains, boundaries, or whatever the respective geometric entity level is in our geometry. And they are overridden by other nodes that you add and apply to the geometry following these settings. So this is always what we start with upon including any physics in our model. Now let's define the physics for the temperature distribution through the bracket. And there's a few ways we can do this. Once again, we can right click the respective node, the physics node, and add them there. Or we can simply refer to the physics tab in our ribbon and also add them here. You can see that physics settings are available for each geometric entity level. So whether you want to apply settings to a volume, surface, edge, or point, those options are available within their respective sections. For our model, we want to add a boundary condition and apply a heat flux. You can see this adds a heat flux node in our model tree. Now, after adding the physics condition, we'll want to pick the geometry associated with this condition, choose the appropriate setting, if applicable, and specify a value. In this case, we want to apply our heat flux to all boundaries, except for the two boundaries where our mounting bolts would be. In the graphics window, we can quickly deselect those two individual boundaries to be omitted from our selection. Now let's edit the settings of our condition to specify the type of heat flux, which in this case would be convective. And now we'll want to enter a value for the heat transfer coefficient, which would be 10 watts per meter squared Kelvin. So this is the process we go through when adding any physics to our model. Let's add another heat flux boundary condition. We're going to apply this to those two boundaries we omitted from our last selection by selecting them in the graphics window. Then we want to edit the settings to specify the type of heat flux, which would be a general inward heat flux. And then we want to add a value for our heat flux, which in this case would be 10,000 watts per meter squared. If we return back to our thermal insulation one node, you'll see that all of the boundaries previously included in this node's selection are overridden. 
if we expand the override and contribution section of the settings window, you can see our default boundary condition is overridden by our heat flux boundary conditions. Likewise, in our heat flux one node, if we expand that section, you'll see that the boundary condition we applied here is overriding our default boundary condition. So this section enables us to see the other nodes that our current node either contributes to or overrides. And whether or not a physics node will contribute to or override another physics node in our sequence is completely dependent on the type of node added. In Comsol Multiphysics, there are two types of physics nodes, exclusive and contributing. As the name suggests, exclusive nodes mean that only one node can be active on any given geometry selection, whereas contributing nodes mean that you can have more than one of these nodes applied to the same geometry selection. For the heat transfer in solids interface, the default boundary condition node is an exclusive node, while the heat flux node is a contributing node. Since exclusive nodes can be the only ones active on any part of the geometry, the thermal insulation one node was automatically overridden wherever we applied the heat flux boundary conditions. So this is what happens when you have an exclusive node and a contributing node applied to the same geometry. At this point, you may be wondering, but what if I have two exclusive nodes applied to the same geometry? Or, if I have two contributing nodes applied to the same geometry. How does the software handle that? Well, let's quickly demonstrate just for example purposes by adjusting some of the settings in our model. So since right now we have two contributing nodes, heat flux one and heat flux two, I can simply clear the selection and apply it to all boundaries. And we can expand the override and contribution section and see how these nodes interact. You can see that the node contributes with the heat flux one node. And likewise, in the heat flux one node, the heat flux two node is listed as a contributing node. So when two contributing nodes are applied to the same geometry, the software automatically adds them together when computing the model. Let's now demonstrate what happens when two exclusive nodes are applied to the same geometry. So first off, I will disable our two contributing nodes. And I'll add another exclusive node type, the temperature boundary condition. And I'll just apply it to one surface on one of our bracket arms. And we can expand the override and contribution section. And we can see it overrides our thermal insulation one node. If I add another temperature boundary condition and apply it to that same boundary, once again, you can see that it overrides the temperature one node, which is the exclusive node that came before it in our physics sequence, as well as the thermal insulation one node. So if you ever have two exclusive nodes applied to the same geometry, the first node earlier in the sequence is always overridden by the one following it. You can learn more about what nodes classify as what types, as well as other information, through the chapter on node types in your COMSOL reference manual. If we return our settings to the way they were originally, removing the temperature boundary condition, enabling our heat flux, and choosing the appropriate boundaries for our inward heat flux, and if we skip to solving the model, we can see that temperature distribution in the bracket assembly. With that, we have showed you how to set up the physics for a simulation. To do this, we first added the physics interface needed based on what we were looking to simulate in our model. Then, we briefly discussed the default nodes provided depending on the physics you add to your model. Thereafter, we added boundary condition nodes, which we applied to the appropriate parts of the geometry while editing the settings and or values for each. After which, we discussed how we can expand the overrides and contributions section of any node to see how the physics nodes interact in our model.